Hello again and welcome back. I am Jared Case, Curator of Film Exhibitions at the Dryden Theatre and the George Eastman Museum. And I'm here today to tell you about the last in our series of films nominated for the Best Picture Academy Award in 1945. This was a series that we were planning on having here at the Dryden as film screenings had we been open this fall, but since we're not, I thought I would use this recommendation series to bring the titles to you and tell you where you can find them so you can watch them at home and make up your own mind. We've already talked about Anchors Away, The Bells of St. Mary's, The Lost Weekend, and Mildred Pierce. The final film nominated for Best Picture 75 years ago was Spellbound, directed by Alfred Hitchcock and starring Ingrid Bergman and Gregory Peck. Now, this is the second film in the series that features Ingrid Bergman, along with The Bells of St. Mary's, and she was really at her peak in 1945. If you remember, she had won for Gaslight just the year before. Now, this film follows Dr. Constance Peterson, a psychoanalyst at a sanitarium, and when it is announced that a new director of the hospital is coming soon, she is surprised at not only how young the doctor is, she was expecting someone much older, but how handsome he is. And as the two professionals work together and get to know each other, an attraction does form, although Edwards himself is showing signs of mental deterioration, as he's very obsessed with the color white and certain patterns and textures. When Edwards is suspected of murder, it's up to Constance to take him on the run, discover exactly who he is and what has happened to his memory including a very memorable stop in Rochester to visit her mentor in the field. Now, even though it was David O. Selznick that brought Hitchcock to America from the UK, this was only his second film with Selznick. And in fact, he only made three total. This film, Rebecca in 1940, and The Paradigm Case a little bit later. Hitchcock had no problem finding work, however, as he was just coming off of Shadow of a Doubt with uh, Universal, and Lifeboat with 20th Century Fox, and after this he would go directly into Notorious for RKO. Now it's not surprising to know that with a Hitchcock film, there are very striking visuals being used. Think about the fork on the table as Edwards is drawing the pattern in the tablecloth. But also pay attention to the close-ups on objects that give them greater weight within the scene, such as the blankets when he wakes up, or the straight razor that he's holding down by his side after he wakes up. The most famous sequence in the film is actually a dream sequence from Peck's character's point of view. And at the behest of Alfred Hitchcock, it was designed completely by filmmaker and famous artist Salvador Dali. And the two had conceived of an entire 20 minute sequence that we would be composed of all of these dream images. But what ends up in the final film is actually only about two minutes of screen time. And while it was Hitchcock's idea, and it was designed almost entirely by Dali, most of it was actually shot by William Cameron Menzies, who went on to disavow the work that he did on the film. But close-ups aren't always enough for Hitchcock. Sometimes he needed something a little more bombastic. So for one shot at the end of the film, he had a large model hand constructed, complete with gun, which could be mounted close to the camera and follow the camera around as if it's a first person point of view as it's being pointed at someone in the room. And even though the film is black and white, on the release prints, he had two frames hand colored red at the moment of the firing of the gun to get a visceral sense of that explosion coming out of the end of the gun. Now you may have noticed at the beginning of this introduction today, I did not call this a streaming recommendation. That is because as far as I can tell, this title, Spellbound, from Alfred Hitchcock, is not available to stream or rent on any platform. I'd like this to be a reminder that just because digital is easily accessible, that doesn't mean that everything that you want is available. This also highlights the importance of theaters, cinemas, and particularly your repertory cinemas that can bring you these classic films, not only in this wonderful cinematic environment, but also on 35mm film which is why we are very eager to be able to open the Dryden back up to you in 2021 and be able to welcome you back with open arms. We hope that you come back. We hope that you've enjoyed this series throughout 2020 and that you'll come back for more in 2021, right up until that point where we can show you film again. Thanks and have a great holiday.